Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This webinar is sponsored in part by an educational grant from Satellite Healthcare, and we thank them for their support. My name is Melanie Paris, and I'm the Director of Health Initiatives and Education here at the American Kidney Fund. Before I turn the presentation over to today's speaker, I'd like to direct your attention to the control panel you should see on your screens. All participants are on mute, so we won't hear you, but welcome your questions. If you have a question, please type it into the section of your control panel titled questions. We'll see your questions and we'll do our best to answer them either by replying to you in the questions box or out loud during the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available for viewing on our website, kidneyfund.org webinars within the next one to two weeks. As a friendly reminder for those of you who are health professionals, this webinar is not accredited for continuing education credits, and you will not receive a certificate upon completion. If you believe that your accrediting body may offer you credits for attending this webinar, we'll be happy to send you a certificate of attendance after today's session. Simply email us at education at kidneyfund.org. Without further ado, let me introduce today's speaker, Rory Pace. Rory has worked with kidney patients for 20 years. She is the Director of Nutrition Services at Satellite Healthcare, a not-for-profit dialysis provider. She holds a bachelor's degree in dietetics from UC Davis and a master's degree in public health from UCLA. Roy has published and presented on numerous nephrology nutrition topics, including protein nutrition, bone disease, hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, fluid balance, and urea kinetic modeling. Rory is an active volunteer and leader in organizations dedicated to both kidney disease and nutrition. Thank you, Rory, for joining us. Thank you all for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, today we'll be, we will be discussing managing food choices for people with kidney disease during the holidays. Our goals today are for you to be able to name healthy holiday foods for people with kidney disease, name ways to modify your holiday menus to be kidney friendly, and to discuss ways that family and friends can help support people with kidney disease to eat well during the holidays. Next slide, please. Kidney disease brings many changes in the lifestyle, treatment, and diets of those who carry that diagnosis. And people with kidney disease and their families or caregivers may therefore feel unsure or anxious about how to handle holiday meals and foods. <clears throat> While we know that food is necessary to keep our bodies working and functioning and to stay healthy, I think it's important to consider that food has many other roles that are equally important. We're especially reminded of that around the holidays. When you think of your favorite holiday, what do you think of first? Is it food? When I think of Christmas, I think of my dad's brioche. I can smell the delicious aroma of it baking in the oven and remember many Christmas mornings enjoying this special breakfast around the table with family and friends. So you see, food represents culture, tradition, and celebration. It symbolizes our communities and our families. <clears throat> and though people with kidney disease may have to make changes in their diets, food remains an important part of their lives. However, it may be more challenging for people with kidney disease to meet their nutritional needs during the holiday times. We want patients, families, and caregivers to have confidence to know how to enjoy their favorite holiday foods uh, and help those that they care for and support to enjoy favorite holiday foods in kidney-friendly ways. When kidneys aren't working right, changes in diet can help people with kidney disease stay healthy. Some of the things that people with kidney disease need to be aware of in their diets are sodium, potassium, phosphorus, fluid, protein, and carbohydrates. We'll talk about these today and how they apply to holiday food choices. We'll also talk about staying in balance during holiday eating. One nutrition challenge at the holidays and every day is sodium. Sodium is found in salt, and eating too much sodium makes you thirsty. Sodium can raise blood pressure, 
And this is true for people with kidney disease as well as for the general population. You may be aware that many foods are high in sodium and you may be familiar with some of the sources like snacks, processed foods, sauces, and condiments. Sodium may make many appearances on your holiday buffet or dinner table. You may be familiar that snack foods are high in sodium, such as chips, crackers and dips, salami and cheeses, or olives and pickles. But did you know that meats can also be high in sodium? The holiday ham at the center of the table or sausage and bacon in dishes increase the sodium content of the meal. And brined turkey has more sodium than turkeys prepared in other ways. <clears throat> Side dishes like stuffings and casseroles, biscuits, rolls, and cornbread, gravies and sauces and condiments, soups and baked goods can also add sodium to the table. Next slide, please. Potassium is a mineral that helps keep mus helps muscles and nerves work properly, and it's found in fresh fruits and vegetables, dairy products, nuts, and beans. High levels uh, are in particular sources and foods within these categories. It's important to note that too much potassium can be very dangerous for people on kidney disease because it interferes with the proper functioning of muscles and nerves, including the heart muscle. Next slide, please. Where does potassium appear around the holidays? It's important to be aware that many of our holiday favorites are high in potassium. Foods like potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, and winter squashes are very high in potassium. Some of our favorite holiday desserts like pumpkin pie, pecan pie, and cream and mincemeat pies also are sources of potassium. While we may think of vegetables as healthy food choices, those like spinach and other leafy greens, Brussels sprouts, tomato sauce, artichokes, beets, and okra are fall and winter vegetables that are particularly high in potassium. Similarly, dishes with fruits, including orange, melon, pomegranate, persimmon, banana, raisins, acai, coconut, or avocado, or the juices of these fruits are higher in potassium than other choices. And though it is the butt of many jokes around this time of year, fruitcake is a ho traditional holiday dessert that is important to note is high in potassium because it contains dried fruits and nuts. Phosphorus is another mineral that's important for people with CKD to be aware of. You may not have heard as much about phosphorus as sodium or potassium. Phosphorus helps keep bones and teeth strong and therefore too much phosphorus in the body causes problems with the bones as well as heart and veins. Phosphorus is naturally found in dairy products, nuts, beans, and grains, but these days processed foods and drinks can also be very high in phosphorus. Most patients on dialysis take medicine with their food that helps them control their blood phosphorus levels. Like sodium, phosphorus may lurk in many foods on our holiday tables. Dishes containing nuts, such as stuffing, salads, pies, and cookies are high in phosphorus, as are bean dishes. Breads and stuffings that are made from packaged mix have more phosphorus than those that are made from scratch. Dairy products like milk and cheeses or sauces made with these ingredients also have a lot of phosphorus. On the dessert table, Puddings, cream pies, chocolate, and chocolate desserts are the higher phosphorus choices. And lastly, it's important to remember that any packaged or processed foods can have a lot of extra phosphorus added. Healthy kidneys balance sodium and fluid in the body, but when kidneys can't get rid of the extra fluid, it builds up. 
when too much fluid accumulates in the body, it can cause swelling, high blood pressure, shortness of breath, and ultimately heart damage. Managing fluids can be an everyday challenge for people with kidney disease. It's helpful to know that for those who need to watch fluid, that all foods that are liquid at room temperature, so that foods that melt, should be counted as part of the total fluid intake. Some common holiday beverages that to consider as part of the total fluid intake include alcoholic beverages like eggnog, cocktails, beer, and wine. Juice, tea, and coffee are other commonly consumed beverages. And of course, don't forget that water is a beverage that should be counted in the total fluid intake. In addition to beverages, liquid foods or those that melt, like soups, gelatin dishes, ice cream, pudding, and yogurt should be counted as part of the total fluid intake. It's important to remember that too much of any beverage can put people with kidney disease at risk. Protein helps the body heal and build new tissues. Healthy kidneys process the waste products from the protein that we eat. And similarly, dialysis removes protein from our bodies. Eating less protein in mild kidney disease helps kidneys work less hard, while people on dialysis tend to need more protein to replace what's lost. So it's important to consider this difference uh, when you're thinking about you know, your own needs as somebody with kidney disease or as a host or caregiver. Protein is found in meats, poultry, seafood, eggs, and dairy products. And tofu, soy products, beans, and nuts are also vegetarian sources of protein. Protein foods may be the centerpiece of your holiday table, such as turkey, chicken, duck, or ham roast beef or pork, fish or shellfish, but protein may also be part of side dishes like those containing beans, nuts, eggs, or cheese. When I think of a beautiful holiday table, of course I think of the succulent turkey or roast, but I also think of carbs. Carbohydrates are food energy, and the forms that they take are starches, sugars, and fiber. Carbs are especially important to be aware of for people with diabetes because eating a lot of carbs can raise blood sugar. For those without diabetes, eating too many carbs can cause an unbalanced diet or lead to weight gain. Common carbohydrates in our diets are rice, bread, noodles, fruits and juices, and desserts. It's important to note that starchy vegetables like potato, corn, and peas should be counted as carbohydrates. Where are the carbs on your holiday table? They may be stuffing, bread and roll, um, also rice, pilaf, noodles. As mentioned, potatoes should be considered as a carb because they're starchy. Um, fruits and juices contain fruit sugar, which is a kind of carb. And of course, we know that sweet desserts like cakes, pies, and cookies are high in carbohydrates. Every successful celebration starts with a plan. Let's discuss some steps to take for healthy, happy holidays. If you are a person with kidney disease, think about the foods that are usually on your holiday table. What are your absolute favorites, the things that you just look forward to every year and can't think of doing without? On the other hand, think about which foods really aren't that important to you. Maybe the ones that you eat because they're there or because your favorite aunt made them. And lastly, think about what dishes are usually on your table that are really hard for you to resist eating a lot of. This, to illustrate this concept, I think of the, the old Lay's potato chip commercial. Can't eat just one. I think we all have foods that we know 
are, are not only favors, favorites, rather, but are triggers for us that we know if we have a little, we're going to want a little more and a little more and some leftovers tomorrow. So once you've considered what um, foods fall into these categories for you, make a plan to focus on your favorite foods in holiday celebrations. Specifically, try to limit yourself to one small serving of a high potassium food to keep your heart healthy and limit foods that are high in phosphorus to small servings. And lastly, think about those foods that are hard for you to resist, the can't eat just one foods, and consider that those might be better things for you to avoid or stay away from uh, to make that easier so that it's not that really hard battle to not go back for seconds and thirds and have more the next day. Next slide, please. Uh, also, if you're a person with kidney disease, consider bringing a kidney-friendly dish to share with the other guests. Um, this is particularly helpful if you're not sure what your host may be serving. Additionally, if you feel more comfortable, you may consider bringing additional food with you. Um, just, it's a good idea to let your host know this beforehand so that he or she isn't caught off guard and, and doesn't take it personally. Uh, lastly, if you are somebody that needs phosphorus binders, remember to bring them with you and uh, make a plan to make sure that you take them and consider that if a, a celebration or party goes on for you know, an extended period of time that you may need to take more than one dose of binders uh, as you move through the courses of the meal or celebration. Perhaps you've joined our program today because you'll be cooking for a guest with kidney disease. If so, cook as much as you can from scratch to control and limit the amount of potassium and phosphorus that's in foods, as well as sodium. Use fresh or frozen ingredients instead of packaged or canned. Use herbs and spices in cooking instead of salt. And try to prepare and serve sauces on the side. While people with kidney disease do have different nutrition needs, it's important to remember that a kidney-friendly holiday meal can be enjoyed by all guests. There's no need to cook separate, different food for guests with kidney disease. If you are a family member, caregiver, or host, communication is really important for success when it comes to nutrition and food choices. And I will add that this really isn't just true around the holidays, but all the time. And this can be uh, one of the most challenging things when it comes to supporting somebody with kidney disease. Consider that if you're a guest with kidney disease, um, talk to your host about your nutrition needs. Uh, that may be a little uncomfortable to share personal information, but you know, think about how you might be comfortable having that conversation so that your host can be aware and be accommodating uh, to the degree that he or she is able. Similarly, hosts can share their menus with their guests ahead of time so that guests with kidney disease know what to expect and can prepare accordingly. Understand that your guests with kidney disease may not eat everything you serve. You know, if your favorite aunt makes a, you know, pota sweet potato gratin with cheese and cream that may not be the healthiest choice for you as a kidney disease patient, um, you know, there's a way to convey perhaps that uh, how much you've enjoyed that dish in the past, um, but that it's no longer um, a healthy choice for you. Um, and, you know, I would add, too, that uh, hosts should try not to take that personally. Um, you know, and, and last but not least, the important thing is to have an open dialogue. If you're uh, a person with kidney disease, somebody supporting a person with kidney disease, about how you can support them in meeting their goals. I know families and friends and, and caregivers often mean well. Um, and we want to be helpful, but often the things that most naturally come to our minds uh, may backfire or have the in opposite impact of the intention. 
such like, you know, have anybody ever said to you, should you be eating that? Doesn't really have the right uh, impact. It's not usually helpful. So better to talk to your family, friends, caregivers ahead of time and let they let them know how they can support you and help you um, bolstering with holiday food choices and year round. Next slide, please. So now that we have a better awareness of holiday dishes that can be challenging for people with kidney disease, let's look at ways to reset the holiday table to be kidney friendly. One of my favorite playwrights, Oscar Wilde, once wrote, everything in moderation, including moderation. This is a worthy concept to keep in mind as we approach holiday eating. Using moderation helps us stay in balance but not being overly strict lets us incorporate our holiday traditions into a kidney-friendly diet. With that in mind, let's talk about serving sizes. A serving of meat, such as turkey, beef, pork, or fish, is about the size of the palm of your hand or a deck of cards. cards. Remember that People need different amounts or number of servings of protein foods depending on their stage of kidney disease. A serving of rice, stuffing, or vegetables is equal to a scoop about the size of a computer mouse. Because fluids may be limited for people with kidney disease, a good portion for drinks is a small juice glass, about four ounces. Most people on dialysis should limit their total in fluid intake for the day to two tall glasses or about 32 ounces or one liter. What foods are on a kidney-friendly table? For the appetizer course, choose low potassium raw vegetables like peppers, cucumbers, or radishes, and maybe a few carrot or celery sticks. Cream cheese or low-sodium cottage cheese can make a good spread or dip for these vegetables. Low-potassium fruits like grapes, apples, and berries add color and variety to the appetizer course. And unsalted popcorn or pretzels can satisfy the need for crunch. If you need to get more protein in your kidney-friendly diet, deviled eggs are a great appetizer choice. It's important to keep in mind that while you can certainly enjoy your favorite appetizers, you don't want to fill up on those before the main course. Instead, enjoy the conversation with your friends and family. It's sodium, potassium, and calorie free. Speaking of the main course, remember to focus on your favorite foods in reasonable portions. I know one favorite food for many is mashed potatoes. Did you know that you can make mashed potatoes more kidney friendly by double cooking them? Some people call this dialyzing potatoes. This helps to reduce the amount of potassium in the potatoes. The way to do this is to peel the potatoes and cut them in small cubes, about one inch. Boil the potatoes and rinse them in clean water and then boil them again, drain them and, and mash them and prepare them as you normally would. Doing this produces the amount of potassium in the potatoes by 50 to 66 percent. So while that is a significant reduction, it is important to remember it doesn't make them a low potassium dish. It just makes them a lower potassium dish, and they should still be enjoyed in limited portions, like that computer mouse size serving. When choosing your protein foods, Go for turkey, pork, beef, or other poultry instead of salty ham, and choose turkey that is not brined or self-basting, which is higher in sodium. Green salad, green peas, green beans, corn, zucchini, and cauliflower are healthy vegetable choices. And steamed, grilled, or sauteed vegetables are better choices than those that are prepared in sauces and casseroles. When rounding out your plate, 
issues, uh, starches like stuffing without nuts or dried fruit, rice, rice salad or noodles, bread or rolls made from scratch, a small serving of dialyzed mashed potatoes, and remember to limit portions if needed to help keep blood sugar in balance. Make sure that you eat your protein first and don't fill up on your carbs if you're a person that needs extra protein. On the side, cranberry sauce and applesauce are both festive and low potassium accompaniments. And remember to limit or avoid gravy and sauces which add extra salt and skip the salt shaker. That takes us to the most important part of any celebration, dessert. Choose fruit pies like apple, cherry, or berry. Cookies or cakes without chocolate, dried fruits, or nuts, such as sugar cookies, shortbread, snickerdoodles, uh, or pound cake, spice cake, and angel food cake. Uh, peppermints or hard candies are festive and appropriate sweets for a kidney-friendly diet, as are jelly beans or gumdrops. And again, if you have diabetes and are watching portions to manage your blood sugar, consider that desserts like these listed here can fit. They just should be balanced with the other carbs in your total meal, like the starches and fruits and juices. Managing fluid can be challenging. To help manage fluid intake, drink from a small glass and try not to drink while doing other things like talking or during meals. Take time to sip and savor your beverage, which will help you limit your fluid intake. Good beverage choices around the holidays include fruit-infused water, iced tea, or sparkling water with a twist. You may also choose low potassium juices like apple or cranberry or sparkling or hot cider. A cup of hot tea or coffee is a nice end to the meal. It's important to note that it, you should talk to your doctor before including any drinks with alcohol. Before we conclude, let's talk about balanced eating during the holidays. And these tips aren't really specific to people with kidney disease, but may be helpful tips for all of us um, as holiday eating presents challenges uh, and challenges to balance uh, for everyone. If you're going to a celebration, plan ahead about what you were going to eat. Start your day off right and um, Keep your appetite in check by eating breakfast. It's often said that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and this is certainly true in helping to manage your appetite and help you make healthy food choices in holiday party celebration environments. It may be seem logical to skip meals to make room for holiday eating later in the day, but Skipping meals will leave you uh, heading into celebration situations hungry, which will make it harder to make good food choices. Even when we're being careful with our food choices, we all tend to eat more around the holidays and maybe foods that are richer, higher in calories than we normally would. Um, and that, that takes us back to our concept of, you know, using moderation and moderation. So, you know, with that in mind, try to stay active to help balance those extra calories or extra rich foods. Consider taking a family walk after dinner, throw a ball with the grandkids, um, play a lively game of charades, or have a dance party. Whatever it is that you enjoy um, that you can participate in with your family and friends or um, outside of celebrations as well. And of course, you know, consult your doctor before undertaking any um, significant exercise to make sure that it's healthy for you. 
once you're in a, a party or celebration situation, don't overdo it on snacks and appetizers. Again, enjoy the conversation and the time with those people that you care about and save room and appetite for the main course. When it comes to the meal time, be sure to serve yourself a balanced plate that includes protein in the right amount for your kidney disease stage, vegetables or fruits, and carbs. And lastly, consider that it takes time, about 20 minutes, for the message that you've eaten to travel from your stomach to your brain. So pause and give yourself time to digest and for this message to travel before taking seconds. Next slide, please. You may be thinking that we've talked a lot about food, but you still don't know what on earth to cook. Well, with that in mind, I've provided some recipe resources, uh, some websites that have tasty and kidney-friendly recipes. Um, there are probably many others out here, uh, but these should be some helpful and reputable sources for you. In addition, we will upload, uh, along with the presentation, a, um, a handout with a few recipes that you may want to try and enjoy. In summary, let's revisit uh, the following tips for healthy and happy holidays. Keep your food choices in balance. Use moderation. Uh, remember that portions matter. Know yourself, which foods are your favorites, which foods are your triggers or your weaknesses. Talk with your family, your caregivers, your loved one about how they can be of support to you. Plan ahead. And most importantly, enjoy. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Um, well, right now we have a couple of questions um, from our audience that I'd like to post to you. So one question, or we've had a couple of questions on identifying foods that would count toward daily fluid intake. Um, some are more obvious and some are least or less obvious, such as you know, Jello or one person wrote whole fresh foods and we had another one that was mentioned rice um, condensed as a fluid. Can you give some tips on identifying those foods that count toward fluids? Sure. So I think one of the things that is helpful to know when we talk about fluid and foods is that most of our foods are mostly water. Meats, for example, may be 80% water or more. Um, and, and we don't always think about that. But if we try to account for, add up, uh, measure, the food uh, content, or I'm sorry, the fluid content in our foods, um, we'd spend all of our time doing that. That would be very challenging. So instead, the fluid content of food is usually taken into consideration in the fluid recommendations for people with kidney disease that need to limit their fluid. So, you know, you mentioned the example of rice. Uh, people think about, well, rice is, uh, you, you cook rice in water and it absorbs the water. So, you know, does that count as water? We'll consider that the rice grain has been basically dehydrated and is being rehydrated. So that's kind of the long answer. The short answer is if you're a person with kidney disease needing to watch your fluid intake, the fluid that is in solid foods that don't melt is not critical to try to account for and keep track of. Really, you want to put the focus on liquid beverages, um, liquid dishes like soups and gravies even, and then the dishes that melt like ice cream and jello and popsicles and yogurt and pudding. Okay, thank you. Um, and before I go on with questions, I just wanted to mention that the slides that were used during the presentation, the presentation today will be posted to our website once the recording is made available. 
And additionally, the recipe handout Rory mentioned will also be posted to our website and available for download. So check back at kidneyfund.org slash webinars for this information to be posted within the week. Um, so I, I do have a couple of other questions. A lot of people who have kidney disease also have maybe diabetes or heart disease as well. What adjustments in the meal are needed for people who have those conditions or maybe others that are common? Certainly, nutrition for people with kidney disease can be extra challenging when other chronic conditions like diabetes or heart disease are figured in. Let's talk a little bit about each of those separately. So, um, you know, we tend to think of diabetes as requiring, you know, no sugars and, you know, maybe special foods. Um, but a diet for diabetes is really just a healthy, well-balanced diet. Um, the same kind of diet that's good for all of the population, including people with kidney disease. So really the, the thing that has the most impact on blood sugar control for people with diabetes is the carbohydrates, uh, as was discussed in some of the earlier slides. And, you know, so it's just important to consider that balance you know, in the menu, in the plate, in the, the food choices between courses, uh, either in a holiday celebration situation or any day, um, you know, and, and really what we try to teach is, you know, balance, but in the concept of, of exchanges or making choices. So, for example, if you really love grandma's apple pie and you are looking forward to a piece of that after dinner, budget some carbohydrates for that pie by not eating, you know, all of the carb choices that are on the table. So if you can live without a roll, but you really love the stuffing, you know, have a spoonful of stuffing, have some green salad, which is low in potassium and um, as well as carbohydrate and, uh, you know, is, is filling and save some of those carbohydrates for that favorite pie. Um, and of course, you know, any, it's important to remember that um, beverages also tend to have sugar and can contribute to um, challenges with blood sugar control. So it's best for people with diabetes to choose unsweetened beverages. I would like to think of that as, you know, making more room for the carbs in the good food, right? Save it for the good stuff. Um, as far as heart disease goes, the key thing to focus on or modify there is fats. And that may be um, added fats at the table. So somebody with heart disease is better off to enjoy their freshly baked roll uh, without butter, enjoy just the um, good flavor of that fresh bread. But it's also uh, a factor in preparation. So choosing heart healthier fats to cook with, like olive oil or canola oil uh, versus butter or shortening um, that helps to reduce fat intake. Um, it's also important to limit the total amount of fat that's used in cooking because even heart, heart healthier fats do contribute to the uh, production of cholesterol in our livers. Um, and there are also preparation methods that don't use any fats like grilling um, or sauteing in um, fruit juice instead of oil. Uh, so those are some of the, the simplest, most uh, readily uh, incorporatable <laughs> modifications to make for people with heart disease to reduce the fat content of holiday foods. Thank you. Actually, while I'm um, thinking of it, if I if I may add another, um, sure. I think one one of the uh, common holiday foods that is tends to be high in fat that doesn't need to be is stuffing. For anybody who's made stuffing, you know that the uh, recipe or instructions usually begins with melting a whole lot of butter and sautéing your vegetables in it, um, and perhaps adding more butter later to help moisten the stuffing. Um, but you can accomplish the same goal by adding um, 
a low sodium broth or a juice like apple juice uh, to give good flavor and good moistness for the stuffing with much less fat. Oh, thank you. Um, there's a question. I'm uncomfortable telling the host of the Thanksgiving dinner what my dietary restrictions are as a kidney patient. How do you suggest I deal with the issue? So this also sounds like relationships and how much you want to reveal about you know, what you need. So what are your tips on having that conversation? This is a challenging one, and it's really going to vary for each person. Uh, many people are very private about many aspects of their lives, including their own health or health care needs. And I think that, um, you know, if you're in that situation, you have to really reflect on what you are comfortable with. Um, if you prefer to keep that information private, then you just may need to make a plan to make sure you have something to eat that, um, you know, is healthy or safe for you. Um, but it may be, it may work to take kind of a, a moderate approach to not reveal, you know, the nature of your special dietary needs, but to say that you're focusing on your food choices to be healthier and, you know, therefore you um, are I'm trying to think, um, I guess I would say, you know, you can say, tell your host that you may not uh, eat all of the food that is served uh, because you are focusing on healthier food choices, but that you'll really enjoy being there and being a part of the celebration. Um, you know, to maybe focus on that social aspect of the gathering. Um, this is a really tough one. You know, it's there's not one answer, and even when approached constructively and, and carefully, people can get their feelings hurt. Um, so I think you, if you are somebody with kidney disease and you don't want to share your diagnosis, um, you can make a choice to bring your own food. You can make a choice to just generally inquire what types of things will be served and how they might be prepared, which might then help you make a choice about what to eat or um, what you might bring with you. Um, I think the easiest solution is the one that was mentioned, which is bring a kidney healthy dish, a kidney friendly dish. Uh, something you know you can eat so that you feel confident that there's at least one thing on the table that you can eat with confidence without having to it to be a big discussion. I know that wasn't a very specific answer, but I hope that at least gives some thoughts or some ideas about how to approach that. And I would add, you know, if you are um, a, a person with kidney disease on dialysis, this is a great thing to reach out to your dietitian or social worker about. Um, they may have some tips to help guide you in the right direction, particularly because they will know you well. Thank you. That actually leads into another question. Um, what are the biggest differences between a chronic kidney disease diet and an end-stage renal disease diet when it comes to the holidays? There are really more similarities than differences between uh, holiday food choices for chronic kidney disease versus dialysis. The most uh, noteworthy one is amount of protein. And we touched on this a little bit, but there's enough evidence to suggest that when people have chronic kidney disease, if they limit the amount of protein foods that they eat, particularly animal proteins, that that makes their kidneys work less hard and may actually keep their kidneys healthier longer, potentially pushing off, delaying the need for dialysis. So somebody with kidney disease in earlier stages may want to serve a holiday plate that has a small portion of, say, turkey, along with some vegetables uh, and maybe a little bit more carbs uh, to help 
uh, provide enough calories but keep the protein moderate. Whereas somebody who is on dialysis, particularly peritoneal dialysis, should probably make protein foods the centerpiece of their plate. And this is true any day, not just on holidays. And um, balance that out with smaller portions of uh, fruits and vegetables and carbs. The only difference for somebody on peritoneal dialysis would be increasing the amount of vegetables on the plate because peritoneal dialysis is very good at clearing potassium from the body. And so people on peritoneal dialysis tend to need a lot more potassium. Um, so, but the rest of the things that we talked about today, sodium, phosphorus, um, fluid, uh, really apply across many stages of kidney disease. I guess it's fair to say that fluid intake needs do vary greatly, um, partly influenced by stage, but also influenced by uh, individual patients' bodies and how much their kidneys are still working. Uh, even people on dialysis sometimes have some leftover kidney function that uh, helps them make some urine and get rid of some fluid, and so they may be able to drink a little bit more fluid whereas people who are not yet on dialysis with earlier stages of kidney disease who have hearts that don't work very well may need to limit their fluid pretty um, significantly. Thank you. Here's another one. Uh, when I know I'm going to be eating a bigger holiday meal, when should I plan my dialysis around that, right before or right after? Hmm, that is a very good question, and I'm guessing that comes from a home dialysis patient. And I think this is a good thing to discuss with your treatment team, who, again, who will know you better and know your dialysis prescription. But I will add that there sometimes is a perception that if I do my dialysis after I eat, then I can eat more, I can eat whatever I want, or you know, eat more potassium or phosphorus, and my dialysis will take it out right away and it won't be a problem. And that's not really correct because it does take time for the nutrients that are in our food to be digested and broken down to that level of the actual um, waste products or elements to get to the stage where they actually can be removed through either hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. So my guess would be for most patients, it's probably better to do your treatment ahead of time, um, more for kind of social or logistic reasons than physical reasons. Uh, you know, my experience working with patients is, um, you know, they're all human and, once they're in the mode of uh, doing something else, focusing on something else like an activity or a holiday celebration, dialysis leaves their minds, which is perfect, which is great. You know, we want people to dialyze to live, not live to dialyze. Um, but I think there's a potential for mistreatment if it's put off until after a celebration when then people are you know, have full tummies and are happy and have enjoyed the company of their friends and loved ones. Um, so I think those are the two things to consider. Um, but again, it is important to talk with your, your nurse, your care team to get that kind of feedback for your specific uh, dialysis prescription because everybody's dialysis prescription is a little bit different. Well, I have two questions that I, I think I'll just combine them because they're closely related. So one is where can I get kidney-friendly recipes to use for the holidays and also um, those that are on a budget. A lot of people are on budget, so where can someone find kidney-friendly recipes that are not expensive or complicated to prepare? Those are some challenges for sure. So hopefully the recipe, I'm sorry, yes, recipe source resources that were included in the slide deck will be of use to those who have this question. 
um, you can certainly Google as well, but um, Satellite Healthcare's website, Kidneys Do That, has some recipes. Um, Davida has a pretty uh, extensive collection of recipes that may be helpful. Uh, and then these other two sites here, Northwest Kidney Centers, as well as a uh, blog that is um, written by a dialysis dietitian, a renal dietitian called Kidney Grub, had some nice recipe options there. Um, now, some of those recipes are going to be fairly simple, and some of them may be more complicated and elaborate. But I think if we talk about and think about eating on a budget, the, the best approach is to keep it simple, right? We talked about having a balanced holiday plate and, um, you know, maybe a turkey or a beef tenderloin is an expensive protein choice, but roast chicken may be just as delicious and much more economical, you know, or a, a pork loin. Um, rice is very inexpensive and can be um, easily kind of spruced up with um, some veggies or seasonings. Uh, I believe I did see some rice or rice salad recipes in some of these sources. Um, again, stuffing uh, made from bread, relatively low in cost, not complicated recipes to um, put together. Um, you know, I think we it's sometimes easy to think that eating healthily means you know, buying food that is more expensive, you know, organic food or from fancy stores. Um, but really, as long as we are choosing fresh ingredients, unprocessed foods, um, typically you can create a menu that's lower in cost. Uh, you know, and that includes even fresh or frozen vegetables. Frozen sometimes are, are more economical, but are just as healthy. Um, so if you're looking for recipes, you know, please do check out some of these sources. I think you will find some that are not overly complicated or elaborate uh, and can be budget friendly. Thank you. Um, here's another one. I will be eating my Thanksgiving dinner at a restaurant. What are some other tips besides the ones that you've mentioned should I be aware of? I think the most important thing when it comes to restaurant dining is to know your restaurant. Um, and, and knowing your restaurant means getting some experience with restaurants and asking questions and going back to restaurants that are supportive of your needs. Some restaurants are just not going to be able to be uh, flexible or make modifications to help support your kidney diet because of how their recipes are prepared and others who want to be accommodating and really want to earn your business and your loyalty will make those accommodations for you. So, you know, I think it's important to be um, polite and constructive in approaching this with a restaurant, but, you know, same thing, you can ask questions, you can share to the degree you're comfortable uh, about what your dietary needs are. I think when it comes to restaurants, the most obvious and common um, concern or request is salt or sodium. Um, you know, and it may be that you don't want to, you don't have to say, I have kidney disease and I can't eat a lot of salt, but that you can say to the server, I'm trying to watch my salt intake. Are there, is it possible for this dish to be prepared without added salt or without the sauce, um, that kind of thing. You know, and it, it, depending on the restaurant, it may be worth going in in advance of the meal to, you know, during a time when it's not busy, when you might be able to talk with the chef uh, and find out about how some of the foods are prepared. Um, so, you know, similar tips, but, you know, in my experience, there are restaurants that will be accommodating and others that just aren't for whatever reasons. And so it's the ones that can accommodate you that you'll go back to. 
And I guess I would add to that, I would expect chain restaurants to have less ability to be flexible in their preparation methods um, than, you know, smaller, more local, more independently owned restaurants. Um, and, you know, in that case, I think you just assume that you had all your salt for the day and you try to make low sodium choices the rest of that day and perhaps the next day. Um, you know, again, focus on things that you know typically aren't um, prepared with added salt or processed ingredients like steamed vegetables or green salad, um, that kind of thing. Thank you. Uh, let's see. One is, based on your presentation, how would someone who is a vegan with kidney disease adjust their holiday meal? This is a, a challenge for sure and an emerging area for us as uh, dietitians working with kidney disease patients. I think um, we will continue to learn more and get more comfort level with vegan and vegetarian diets as they become more common. Um, but I think that as we trade out animal products in our diets for vegetable-based, you know, plant-based foods, that there's probably a, a break even in some of these nutrients of concern or maybe even an improvement. Um, you know, we focus on things like dairy products and nuts and beans being high in phosphorus because they give us less protein bang for the buck than meats do, but meats are also very high in phosphorus. So while we may steer uh, somebody who eats a mixed diet to limit beans and nuts and dairy products, for a vegan diet, that you know, including those foods, is probably not problematic. Um, so I think for the modifications for a vegan diet, really would focus more on the sodium content um, and probably watching the potassium content as well. Um, I will say that it can be challenging for somebody to get adequate protein on a vegan diet if they're on dialysis. Um, and so that's something to work with your dietitian on if you are on dialysis. Um, for those with chronic kidney disease not on dialysis, there is more and more evidence emerging that a plant-based diet preserves kidney function longer, helps keep kidneys healthy longer and is probably a good idea. Thank you. Um, I guess that would be our last question. So thank you again, Ms. Pace, for joining us and leading us, or leading such an excellent webinar. I mean, I know holiday eating is a challenge for all of us, and particularly if you have kidney disease, it can be even more so. So that was so much useful information, so thank you. Um, let's see, our next webinar will be held Wednesday, November 15th from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Sodi of St. Louis University Hospital will highlight the ups and downs kidney patients and their families may experience after a kidney transplant. She will provide tips for ways that transplant patients can live their fullest, healthiest lives. Registration is now available. Visit kidneyfund.org slash webinars for more information to register. When the webinar closes, please do not close your browser window. You may see a pop-up saying that the webinar has ended. Please close that pop-up and proceed to the webinar evaluation survey. Your honest feedback will help us make our webinar program the best it can be. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>